Hey, what's up? I'm going to show you guys how to mirror your Android phone on your Mac and how to control it with mouse and keyboard as well as hide the keyboard, uh, the virtual keyboard, so you'll have more screen real estate to work with. I'm also going to show you how to set up a shortcut to launch either of those phones wirelessly. So let's check it out. Uh, you're also going to need to set up USB debugging on your Android phone. So just go to settings, about phone, and find build number. And keep clicking on build number until it says you have developer options available. And then you can go back, you can go to system and advanced and you'll see developer options. Under developer options, you'll need to make sure USB debugging is switched to on. Cool, so this is pretty easy. You just go to my GitHub page. I have a link in the description and you can download my script. Just go to releases and download the zip file. Uh, once you have it downloaded, you need to extract it and save it somewhere other than your downloads folder. I'm gonna save mine in Git repos. And you can see we got a readme file if you have any questions. It's also an install requirements script. This will install uh, Homebrew as well as SCRCPY and Android platform tools. So there's basically two steps here. You need to install the requirements and then you can run my show phone script. Both of these scripts need permission to execute. So go ahead and open your terminal. You need to type chmod space plus x space and then you can drag and drop the install requirements.sh file into your terminal press enter and you should have execute privileges on the script now so now that you have execute privileges you can drag and drop that install requirements.sh script back into the terminal hit enter and it should run through the install process next we'll need to give execute permissions to showphone.sh so you can type chmod space plus x space and then drag the showphone.sh script into the terminal. And finally, you can drag the show phone script into the terminal, hit enter, and you should see, and you should see something like this. This is the help documentation, kind of telling you what it can do. So basically you just run the script and you can add one of these things at the end of the script and it's gonna do something different. Uh, it gives you the details of what each one of them does. Hit space, dash dash show, and you'll see we have no phone set up. And we can set up up to three phones. So let's set up our first phone. We'll run the script with dash dash setup instead of show now. And you'll see we need to plug in a phone with a USB cable. I'll go ahead and plug in my phone now. Uh, you should see something on your Android phone now. Uh, go ahead and check the box and click OK. Now if we run the setup process again, you'll see we have an available device. I have a Pixel 2 XL here. If you have multiple phones plugged in, you'll have to choose one. Uh, in this case, there's only one option, so type one and hit enter. Now you can save that phone's information in one of three locations. I'm going to save it in location one. So now the script is doing some things for you and setting up your phone. And it looks like we're good to go. Now you can run uh, the script with dash dash Wi-Fi or dash dash USB. If you have it plugged in, you can use USB. Uh, if you want it wireless, just do the Wi-Fi, obviously. So let's unplug the phone and try Wi-Fi. All right, phone's unplugged. I'm going to run the script with dash dash Wi-Fi. All right, there's my phone. You can see I can control it with my mouse and my keyboard works. And once you're finished with it, you can just click the X. Now, if we use the show flag again, we'll see we have a phone set up in position one. That's my Pixel 2. And all this information is actually saved into the script. So you shouldn't have to go through the setup process again unless you reset everything. Let's go ahead and set up another phone. I have an old Samsung phone. I'll plug it in via USB. Run the setup flag. You'll see a Samsung G390A. Go ahead and type one, enter. I'm gonna put this in position two. All right, that's been saved to my script. So now we have two phones set up. Let's go ahead and leave it plugged in and run it with USB right now. Go ahead and enter one to choose the Samsung phone. So this is actually displaying from the USB to the computer. You can still control it the same way, but it's a little more stable, especially if you have bad internet. You know, keyboard, mouse, everything works the same. Let's X that out. So now that we have two phones set up, let's run the Wi-Fi flag again. And you'll see we have to choose which phone we want to use this time. Uh, the Pixel or the Samsung, so one or two. I'm going to choose the Pixel, so I'll type one, hit enter. Now we're wirelessly displaying the Pixel phone. We can control it, do everything with that. But let's say you want to do both phones at the same time wirelessly. We could open a new tab in the terminal, run the same script with Wi-Fi. And this time we'll choose the Samsung phone. And you can see we could have both phones casting at the same time. 
Also, if you don't wanna go through that screen where you have to choose which phone you wanna cast wirelessly, after the Wi-Fi flag, you can enter one through three. So obviously one's gonna launch the Pixel, uh, two would launch Samsung, and three isn't set up, so it wouldn't do anything. And when we were going through the setup process and actually saving the details of each phone, you can see they're saved at the top of this script file, and then the file is just saved each time you add a new phone. So once you have them added, you shouldn't have to update them or really change anything. Uh, there's also a couple settings you can change. For example, if you want to uh, hide the virtual keyboard, I can show you how to set that up real quick. So if you guys want the keyboard to be hidden so you have more screen real estate, go ahead and use the settings flag and answer yes to the first question here if you want to use the null keyboard. So if I run Wi-Fi 1, it'll launch my Pixel and you'll see down here at the bottom the keyboard doesn't actually pop up. And in order to get this to work, you'll have to install an actual keyboard from the App Store. I have a link in the description for that too. It's also on my GitHub page at the bottom. It's called Null Input Method. And it basically sets your device to use a non-visible keyboard. So you can see a lot more on your screen. So I'm gonna turn those settings off and show you what it looks like with and without. So here you can see about one third of the screen is taken up by the keyboard, which if you're using a physical keyboard, you don't really need that virtual keyboard to be on the screen taking up real estate. So if you have that setting for the Null Keyboard set to yes, uh, my script will change your keyboard to the null input method keyboard, that, that invisible keyboard, each time you connect. And when you disconnect, your phone will switch back to its default keyboard that you had when you connected in the first place. And that's also saved in the script uh, under phone keyboard. So once you have everything set up, you shouldn't have to really mess with it ever again. Uh, but if anything weird is happening or maybe you reset your phone, or it's not connecting for some reason, there is a reset flag which will erase each of the phone's information in the script. So you can basically start over. So as you can see, I have two phones set up here. If I run that reset command and I hit yes, and then the show command again, you'll see that we have no phone set up again. I'll go ahead and set those two back up. Okay, we got them both set back up. Now this is cool and all, but it would be way cooler if we could just type a keyboard shortcut and launch whatever phone we wanted at any time. So if you remember right, we could run the Wi-Fi flag and then one through three, whichever phone we want to launch. So really we just need this command here and we could set it up to a shortcut key and launch our phone anytime we want. So to get this to work properly, we're gonna have to use Automator, which comes installed on Mac already. So that's pretty cool. All right, here's Automator. Go ahead and select Quick Action, hit Choose. Now we're gonna search for a run shell script. This is gonna set up a task to run a shell script and then we can set up a shortcut key to launch it each time. Go ahead and drag that over. Make sure the shell dropdown has slash bin slash bash and the workflow receives no input, otherwise this won't work. So make sure that's set up that way. I'll go ahead and put this in the description as well, but uh, you'll need this so that the, the shell that launches the script will have access to the two tools we installed in the terminal earlier. That may sound complicated, but just do what I'm doing right here and it should work just fine. And if you remember, this is the script with the Wi-Fi flag and one, which is gonna launch my Pixel. So we'll go ahead and copy that over. Uh, we also need to add the ampersand sign at the end and at the beginning, N-O-H-U-P, so that the shell will keep running the script until we hit the X. Again, this is just bash scripting stuff. So if you don't understand it, it's fine. Just copy what you see on my screen. And we'll go ahead and hit the run button just to make sure everything works properly. If it doesn't, you should see some uh, errors down at the bottom here in the log. If I click the X, you'll see the workflow has been completed. And as you can see, it is running the shell script just fine. Everything's working. And it gives you the same output as it would have in the terminal. So it's doing the same thing. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll set up a shortcut to launch it. I'm gonna call it show pixel Wi-Fi. Actually, while we're in here, let's set up the Samsung phone too. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just do uh, the Wi-Fi flag in two instead of one to launch the Samsung phone. Cool, it works. So we'll save this one as Show Samsung Wi-Fi. All right, cool, so we got those two workflows saved. So now we get to set up a shortcut to launch these two. Go ahead and open up your system preferences, go to keyboard, and then shortcuts. And on the left, you'll see services. This is where our workflows will show up. Scroll down until you see your two newly created workflows. And then we just set up whatever shortcut we want for each one. I'm gonna choose like all the modifier keys in P for the Pixel, and all the modifier keys in S for Samsung. So let's try it. I think we're all good now. We shouldn't have to change anything. We should be able to run it just by typing that shortcut. Let's launch the Pixel first. Awesome, that worked. So let's try the Samsung now. 
Awesome, so now we got both phones set up to launch anytime via a shortcut, as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi. And you can modify and set up different workflows for USB if you want that instead, or you can add another phone to the Wi-Fi script. And I don't really have a third phone, so two is good enough for now. So this is how you do it. So it's pretty useful to me. Hopefully it's useful to you. Let me know if you want that Windows version. I can create that pretty quickly. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.